Okay, welcome back to my channel, May Between the Pages. My name is Taylor, and today we're going to be doing my June wrap up. Now, this is a bit overdue. Uh, it is about the middle of July now, <laughs> but we get there when we get there, right? I'm going to be talking about June and the first part of July because I'm actually going to be changing my TBR structure. There's another video coming up soon where I'm going to talk about how that's changing, uh, but I'd like to kind of just get myself caught up to what I have been reading up until this point before I start this new structure. So I guess you can call this a recent reads, not just a June TBR, but I've got eight books to talk about today. The first book we're going to talk about is Into the Riverlands by Nevo. This is the fourth book in the Singing Hills cycle. It's a collection of novellas that follow the same main character, Chi, who is a traveling uh, monk, and they go around the world collecting stories. So while each individual a novella isn't connected story-wise necessarily. We follow the same main character and that's the through line through the whole thing. Actually, this is the third book in the series, but I also read the fourth book, Mammoth at the Gates, so we'll just talk about both of them now. <laughs> so the third one, Into the Riverlands, uh, we follow Chi as they travel through the Riverlands and learn about different uh, folklore and mythology stories um, or myths from that area from different perspectives. And for me, in this one, Vo really played with the idea of a myth. Uh, how is it created? How is it perpetuated? Um, how it can change in the telling depending on who is the one uh, saying the, the story. So I thought it was a really interesting reflection on how those stories come to be. You might even be there at the moment uh, that a myth or a legend is created, but even the observation of it can skew the perspective that it's told from. So it's just a really interesting perspective on storytelling and how important it is to us as humans. I really enjoyed it. I think I gave it four or 4.5 stars. I can't remember exactly, but around that area. And then the fourth book, Mammoth at the Gates, was a full five stars for me. I adored this installment. In this one, we follow Chi as they go back home to their monastery. And when they arrive, uh, they find that there are mammoths at the gates, <laughs> some war mammoths. Uh, they have some visitors at the, uh, at the monastery, and we go from there. This book really explores the feeling of loss, uh, how you can grieve for not just a person, but a place that is gone or a time that has passed, and how grief isn't linear. Uh, we all deal with it in different ways, and I thought it was just such a beautiful exploration of those ideas. I loved being able to see the monastery that she calls home, and the ending of this was just chef's kiss beautiful. One more book did get released this year and I plan to pick that up as well. I love these audiobooks. I love the narrator um, and my library, I'm very lucky, does uh, have them all. At least, I, well I haven't checked if they have the newest release, but they have up until now so I don't see, I don't see why not. I don't remember the name of the sixth one. I'll be sure to put it on the screen, uh, but I definitely plan to read these as many as Nevo decides to put out uh, because I enjoy them immensely. I also love the feeling of small little physical novellas, so I can't wait to get a physical collection of these in the future. The next book I read is for the Only Good Book Club, and that is The Origin of Species and Other Stories. This was such a thought-provoking read. I've been in my short story era, so this collection was very much <laughs> up my alley, or it's what I've been in the mood to read. Uh, these are all sci-fi stories, and Kim has such a unique, interesting, narrative voice. Like almost all of the information that we get in these stories is done through dialogue and not exposition. So the way that two characters talk to each other and what's said or more often what is not said is what is set sets up the world, which I think is so fascinating as someone who lives in Japan East Asian culture, and I, and I do know that Korea shares this aspect of East Asian culture, that it's often what's not said that's more important than what's said <laughs> in certain social situations, and you have to read the air um, to see, you know, what that person really wanted you to get from that interaction, and to see that kind of baked into this writing in such a skillful way made reading her stories so interesting. Like all anthologies, some of the stories hit more than others. There's a few that I think I'm already forgetting the details of that weren't my favorite, but the ones that I liked, I really liked and gripped, they really gripped my imagination. And those three were Between Zero and One, uh, On the Origin of Species, which is the titular story, 
story and then uh, stars shine in Earth's sky those three were my favorite but I will say the one that's probably going to stay with me the most <laughs> even though the ending it fucked me up okay I it's not part of the favorites because of what it did to me <laughs> the ending um, but the titular story on the origin of species and other stories is paired with the final story, which is on the origin of species and what might have happened thereafter. And that's the one that's going to stick with me. And it's the last, <laughs> the last one uh, in this collection. Um, it's so... What Kim did, like not many people would go there, but she went there. And like I said, that, that choice is going to stick with me. Um, but the three favorites where I found that I was engaged with the story and it didn't scar me <laughs> would be those three that I mentioned. Between Zero and One deals with time travel, which usually is something I shy away from because I end up kind of glossing over all the science parts because I'm like, I don't really care how time travel ended up working. It's, it's working, so let's just go with that premise. Uh, but this one really explores the minutia of that in a way that captured my attention. Um, there's also like a mystery element to it, so you're trying to figure out how these different perspectives fit together. And when that did get revealed at the end, I was like, oh, you know, so I really, really enjoyed that story. Um, and then on the origin of species, um, plays with evolution and... Uh, we're set in the very far, far future, and I don't want to say more than that, but um, that one is a reflection on what is even is humanity, which is a theme that really goes through a lot of these stories is humanity, what makes one human, um, our transformative nature, um, how does one shift into or out of their humanity, really interesting themes. And so On the Origin of Species deals with that pretty, pretty deeply. And then the last one, The Stars Shine in Earth's Sky, that really stuck with me, uh, deals with perspective in a way that blew my little mind <laughs> when I was reading it. Um, there's this tiny little reveal, like shift in perspective that happens near the end of the story that gives it its title. And I'm like, I, that, that makes so much sense, but being able to do that, that, that way to view the world. See, I can't even get the words out, but that way of viewing the world and reality hadn't even occurred to me. Um, and it just, that little tiny switch was so skillful. I don't know, I really enjoyed it. I ended up giving this four stars because of the ones that didn't really stick with me, but the more that I talk about it and sit on it, like the ones that I really liked, I think this deserves higher. I'm gonna give it at least a 4.5, could inch itself up to a five uh, in the future, just because the, the ones that I really liked, I really liked. I don't know, a five, a five usually is reserved for anthologies where I like every story. I don't know. It's at least a 4.5 though. Highly recommend this if you want to read something interesting, thought-provoking, and different. This next one is very different. It is a popcorn read, and that is Fruits Basket Another. Now, Fruits Basket, the original series, is one of my all-time favorite series. It is so close to my heart. That, that manga taught me so many things <laughs> as a young person growing up. I love it and I will reread it and, and enjoy it until the end of my days. It's got the best found family I think I've ever read ever in any form of media. I'll fight you on that. <laughs> so considering it's so beloved and close to me, C color me surprised when I was in the secondhand bookstore here in Japan, uh, Book Off, and Hayato and I sometimes just go in and putz around, and sometimes we make some good finds. Um, I saw this on the shelf, and I was like, Ex -ex "Excuse me, there is there's another like extension on Fruits Basket." This was a online series that the author wrote, just kind of as a one-off, and it became popular enough that they made like book versions of it. And is it? groundbreaking and new? No. Natsuki Takaya knows what she's good at and she decided to stick with that. So this is very similar to Fruits Basket. It has very similar character archetypes, but she's so good at writing that that it felt so cozy and warm and joyful to be back in that kind of situation. So is this Toru and Kyo and Yuki and all of my favorites? No, but it's a really nice like kind of second version <laughs> of that. So I thoroughly enjoyed this. Uh, so I got the first one, the second one, and the third one were all at that book off. And I think they were, oh, I didn't take the sticker off yet, oops. They were like a dollar and 10 cents each. Uh, and I think there's four or five um, 
that are out in this. So I do plan to collect them all and continue reading them. I read the first one in Japanese and I plan to, to read the rest of the series. This means that I'm not reading in my native language, so that always does add an element of maybe I missed a couple cute little things in there that could have bumped this up higher, but for me right now it's sitting at a four stars. It just made me happy, it brought me joy, uh, but it was nothing that blew me away. If you haven't read the original series though, please do. Do yourself a favor. It is some of the best character work out there. And the last book that I finished in June is When We Were Young. This is technically the third book in the Pooh original um, Winnie the Pooh quartet, but the third installment and the fourth installment as well, I think the fourth installment as well, are uh, poems, collections of poems. And the first two are like the written stories of Winnie the Pooh. I talked about this in my recent reads because I read Winnie the Pooh for the first time this year. I mentioned in that video that I had watched the Disney Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh so many times when I was young that like I could quote the whole movie, you could just drop me in it and I could just start you know, repeating what they're saying. I, I wouldn't miss a beat. Um, but because that was the case, I had kind of convinced myself where I thought that I had also read the book and I hadn't. So my patrons, the wonderful people that they are, voted that my first read that was their pick would be Winnie the Pooh. I read it. I adored it. Five bajillion stars. It's just, oh, I see why it's a classic. I, I love it uh, so much. So I'm reading the entire quartet. A uh, little spoiler for what's coming up in the next um, the next recent reads wrap up, but I am reading The House at Pooh Corner, which is the second one right now. Um, but I already finished When We Were Young, and this ended up being a 3.5 star for me. There were some poems that I just didn't get, bounced off of them, you know, that I do that with poetry quite often. <laughs> but there were some that really stuck in there. And very much like on The Origin of Species, the ones that like I got and I enjoyed, I really, really loved. Um, so there are four poems that stuck with me. The first one was Happy the second one, Nursery Chairs, third, Spring Morning, and the final one is Halfway Down. Happiness is a very simple poem about, I believe it's Christopher Robin that is the subject of this poem, putting on like an oversized, um, you know, uh, raincoat, rain hat, rain boots, um, and going out in the rain. And I talked about this in the vlog as well, but this is the poem that showed me how important these little line drawings are to the the essence, the spirit that is Winnie the Pooh, um, because while the poem is cute, it doesn't give you the imagery of going out in the rain um, to see ducks and like this like oversized, cute little oversized image here, the hat's too big for his head. Like you don't quite get this imagery from just the poem itself. And just the pictures themselves, you wouldn't get the context that you needed to give the full package of why this poem is so cute and why it works so well. And it just opened my eyes to how much the drawings are important for Winnie the Pooh. Um, I've always loved the original Winnie the Pooh drawings. Um, I've mentioned before I have them in Sumire's nursery. It's just, there's something about those little sketch looking original Pooh drawings that just, oh, they give you such warmth and coziness. Um, and this collection really showed me why that's the case. Similarly, we have nursery chairs. This one talks about how the different chairs in Christopher Robin's nursery, depending on the shape of the chair, um, lend themselves to different imagination games. So again, you wouldn't get the fact that it was the shapes of the chairs that make this difference without the pictures. So there's one line where it says there's a, a chair that um, he pretends to be in the zoo. And in this picture, you can see it has like slats on it. So it makes sense that he would pretend to be a lion or something like that. But that's not made clear exactly in the poem. So it's the combination again that makes it so good. Um, the next one was Spring Morning. Let's see if I can find it. This one is a bit longer than the other ones that I had picked, but this one I enjoyed because it really captured the whimsy and joy of being in the moment and enjoying the beauty for what it is and not really thinking past that. So I'll just read the first couple lines, which I think will give you the gist. Uh, where am I going? I don't quite know. Down to the stream where the king cups grow. Up the hill where the pine trees blow. Anywhere, anywhere, I don't know. And just that idea of like letting 
the wind take you, your feeling take you, and you don't know exactly where your end goal is. I just, it, it was it was really cute. Um, and then the last one, halfway down. This one's harder for me to explain why it works, <laughs> but it describes this stair halfway down the staircase that feels special to this child. I don't know if it's um, Christopher Robin in this one, it might be. I'll just read the first section because it made me happy and it might make you happy too. It says, uh, halfway down the stairs is a stair where I sit. There isn't any other stair quite like it. I'm not at the bottom, I'm not at the top. So this is the stair where I always stop. And then it, it continues, but just something about it, like, I why does that work for me? I don't know. I don't know. Let me know in the comments down below if that if that kind of imagery works for you. If it sounds cute. I never had a favorite stare, but I you know I have favorite blankets and stuff like that. So I I can understand why a particular location would give um, a child joy. I don't know. Clearly, this collection or those four poems in this collection got me thinking. Um, and if I, it was just those four poems, it would be five stars. Um, but with the balance of the poems that worked for me, didn't work for me. It's sitting at a 3.5. All right, we've got three books that I finished so far in July. The first one is The Stone Sky. I read this from the library, and unfortunately, I already had to return it. Otherwise, I'd hold it up. But uh, my journey with the Broken Earth trilogy has been a long one. I've read one every year, I think, for the past three years. Um, and I've talked about this a million times on my channel, so you can probably quote it with me, but motherhood <laughs> and parenthood is a theme that hits really strongly for me, and it's one that's explored very, very deeply in this series, for good or, or for bad. Um, so because the books were so heavy for me to read, um, I took my time in between. But now having read the trilogy as a whole and seeing the whole arc of the story, I do think it's a five-star series overall, but my individual experience with each book is sitting more around a four-star. I talked about this again in my most recent vlog where I talked through my journey of reading it. These books, I feel like, are so incredibly powerfully and, and intentionally written, like there's no word wasted, and Jemison had a story she wanted to tell and she, she told it, she did that. But for me, it wasn't enjoyable to read, if that makes sense, like I'm glad I read them, but I wasn't like having a great time. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, any other way. I haven't found the right words yet for how the, the series made me feel. Um, and I've read a lot of books that deal with challenging, bleak worlds, themes of racism, cyclical violence, colonialism. Like these are themes that I, I, I like wrestling with uh, in, my, in my books, in my, the works that I read. But something about these just made them, I don't know, hit a bit harder. The third book as well is the one where I finally felt like I sunk into the world um, fully. So in the first two books, you're purposefully kept at a distance and, you know, details are kept from, from you for a reason. Sometimes because of the perspective that we're looking through, because the perspective that we're looking through is from someone who doesn't care to know those reasons, so we don't know them either. Um, but sometimes I think it was just a purposeful choice for Jemison to be like, I don't want you to know this yet. So while the first and the second book had their hooks and their grips in me in different ways. The third book is the one where I really felt like, oh, I get this world. I know this world. Um, and the ending well, had a lot of surprises, a lot of things that I didn't expect. A couple things that I did, but a lot of those resulted in things that I didn't expect. I also think this is one of those series that will hold up fantastically to a reread. Um, and I could see myself bumping at least one of the installments up to five stars upon a reread. So I definitely want to own these physically in the future. Although, I gotta say it every time I talk about it, they did her dirty with those covers. There's so much imagery that would be a just a fucking badass, incredible cover in for the series, and we get we get this. Like what? It it pisses me off. It pisses me off so much. Such wasted potential there. The next book was another uh, The Only Good Book Club read, and that was The Perishing. This one unfortunately ended up being a DNF for me. It was actually a DNF for <laughs> for 75% of us <laughs> uh, in, in, the, in the group. And even those that finished it, it wasn't, it, it, it just, it wasn't a good book. Like the story might have been good at its core, but the way that it was written and the way that the story was delivered to you was, it was the most confusing and convoluted way to get information across that I've ever read. Um, there were sections of it um, that felt overwritten, like we're spending way too much time on these minute details that later didn't seem to have any 
any, you know, pay payoff. Like, why did I need to know all of those details if they're not... It just... It wasn't good. <laughs> so I decided to treat it as if it was a spiffbo book that I was reading as a judge. I gave it up to 25% to see if I'd continue. And it, it just, it, it wasn't working for me. So I did not continue. It's a shame when you have to DNF and I used to be really bad at it, but it's just, I, my reading time is so short now <laughs> that it's like, I, I don't have time to be reading something that's not giving me anything back. Even if it's not like joy, maybe I'm reading something that's engaging me or making me think or something like that, but I just don't have time for a book that confuses me and that's what I'm getting from it. So DNF it was. And the last book I've read so far in July is Steamborn. This is a Spiffbo 10 or Spiffbox uh, book that I read as a judge. So um, I don't like to talk about these books so much on my channel uh, until the official review comes out from Before We Go blog. If you don't know, I am a self-published fantasy blog off. I can... No, no matter how many times I say that, I struggle <laughs> to say it out loud. Uh, or Spiffbo, uh, judge over and before we go blog. For the competition, each team gets 30 books. Uh, they read those 30 and put forth semi-finalists and one finalist that then goes into a pool of 10 finalists and everyone reads those 10 and chooses a winner. So right now we are in the initial stage where we get our first 30 books and read through them. So um, while I have read this book, others in the group have also read it and we kind of have to average our scores and see what we're all thinking as a group before we put out the official review for it. Uh, so I'm not going to talk about too much in depth right now, but you can definitely look forward to my thoughts on that uh, later because usually after the, the review is released, I will do a video talking about my personal opinion on some of the books that I read. So that gets you guys all caught up to where I am in my reading life right now. Like I said, there's going to be a new TBR structure kind of vlog coming out soon, um, very shortly after this one. So you want to have to wait long for that. Uh, but let me know in the comments down below what you're reading. Have you read any of these? Do you feel the same way? Do you feel differently? Let's chat. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click that bell. I'd love to have you as part of this community, and I appreciate it. But for now, I'm gonna head out. Jenny.